This video is sponsored by Skillshare. If you're just starting out, you might feel a bit overwhelmed and that is solely normal. Blender is a powerful tool, but also very complex. So I'm here to share five key mistakes that I made when I first started using Blender. So avoiding these pitfalls will not only save you time, but also enhance your 3D workflow. So let's get started. Mistake number one is not having a default startup. When you launch Blender for the first time, it opens with a default scene, and it's usually a cube, camera, and a light. But here is a pro tip, which took me a year to actually realize. You can customize the startup scenes to fit your own regular needs. Just think about how many times you opened Blender and deleted that cube. It's time to stop. It's not a joke anymore. So set up a scene that you often use. Maybe you need a specific lighting setup or set of shader that you frequently use. I have my own personalized setup that I use with all the ready setting and adjustments. So if you like, you can actually download it for free. The link will be in the description. But if you want to create your own customized setup, here is how to do it. So first you have to arrange your scene as you like, then go to file and then select save startup file. This simple step will save you tons of time and repetitive work. Trust me, your future self will thank you. Mistake number two is misunderstanding scale and proportion. So not paying attention to scale and proportion can cost you. In fact, this is especially true if you're working on a project that needs to fit into real world context, which is pretty much all the time uh, for me. A common error cr is creating models without references to real si world size. And this can lead to objects that are either too large or too small when placed in a scene. So to avoid this, use Blender's measurement tools or start by setting your scene to a real world human mesh. In my case, it's Rob. It's also included in my customized startup. So link will be in the description once again. It's a very bad mesh looking like, but it's an actual size of a human. So you can compare to the actual size of human with any other object and uh, it should look much better than believing what you think is the right measurement because we all have a blind spot when it comes to measurement so it's a it's a human error so keep that in mind i want to take a quick moment and thank our sponsor skillshare you may have heard of Skillshare, but if you haven't, basically Skillshare is a place where your creative dreams become achievable, where every step towards uh, mastering your passion is supported by a community of like-minded individuals. Skillshare is the largest online learning community for creatives, and I personally have a series of classes on Skillshare, and you can go watch them right now. From creating cinematic scenes with Blender to mastering lighting in 3D, these skills can transform your portfolio and bring your vision to life. And I just happened to release my newest chapter of the class, which is all about mastering multi-scene creations in Blender. It's almost one and a half hours of educational materials where we create multiple scenes from one single environment. I also break down some of the works I did for Jaguar, so make sure you do not miss this one. And here is the best part. Cherry on top is basically the first 500 people to click the link below will receive a one month free trial of Skillshare. That is an invitation not just to watch but to engage to create and connect you have 30 days to make up your mind and simply cancel if you don't see the value in having a membership now back to the video mistake number three is not using an asset browser earlier ignoring asset browser is a big mistake that i personally did in the beginning so when it first came out i ignored it for a whole year and then i realized how uh, silly it was. I underestimated the power of this feature and it cost me a lot of time. So the asset browser basically allows you to organize and access all your models, materials and texture easily. It's like having a library at your fingertips. Instead of recreating and importing assets for every project, you can simply store and reuse them, saving you hours of work. To use it, you can simply add your frequently used asset to the asset browser and then in any project you can quickly drag and drop these assets. This will not only streamline your workflow but also keep your projects more organized and efficient. Mistake number four is not optimizing 
your render setting. When I started with Blender, my renders took forever and sometimes the quality wasn't even that great. The key here is to understand the balance between the render quality and time. High quality renders are great, but they shouldn't take an unreasonable amount of time. So start by adjusting the resolution, sampling rate, and light bounces according to your project's needs. For test renders, keep these settings low to save time. And when you're ready for the final render, then you can crank up these settings for the best quality. I usually go for 300X on the resolution and between 256 and 512 for sample rate. Keep in mind, effective rendering is about finding the right setting for your specific project, not just using the highest possible values. Mistake number five, and this is the final mistake of the video, is not utilizing add-ons and extension. In the beginning of my journey in Blender, I solely relied on Blender itself and not the add-ons. But then after a few months, I discovered Blender Market and I was blown away by how many add-ons are there to just make your life a bit easier. There's something for everything, whether you're, you know, you're into architecture, whether you're, you like to create art with Blender. I didn't realize how much easier add-ons could make my workflow. So Blender has a vibrant community that develops incredibly useful add-ons for almost everything from modeling and animation and texturing, as well as rendering. I have talked about some of my favorite add-ons on another video that you should check out. The link will be either in the description or somewhere here or here. So to get started, explore Blender Market. Always look for add-ons that suit your specific needs. Installing them can be very straightforward. Just download and go to Blender Preference and then Add-ons and then you can add your add-ons there. Embrace these tools to enhance your Blender experience and take your project to the next level. And guys, that's a wrap up for me. This is a list of five top crucial mistakes that I have uh, made in the beginning of my journey. I don't want you to make those mistakes. Hopefully this video was helpful. And if it was, please give it a thumbs up, you know, the usual stuff uh, and share it with your Blender fellow and make sure to subscribe for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys in the next one.